What's going on guys? So, I, I wanted to make a video about this yesterday, but I said, you know what, no. Uh, I waited, I wanted to see the press conference, I wanted to see uh, how uh, how it went, I wanted to watch the whole thing, see Hackett introduce himself, and uh, I very much enjoyed the press conference. If you go look at my Twitter timeline, I'm wearing my Justin Simmons jersey today, uh, 31, just because... I don't know. Felt like it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Nathaniel Hackett has officially been introduced as the Broncos head coach. And I'm not going to lie. I was cautiously, cautiously optimistic about the hire. I started having a feeling it was going to be him. Uh, I know it was like between him, uh, Dan Quinn, and Kevin O'Connell, the offensive coordinator from the Rams. Um, it, um, O'Connell wouldn't have even been available to be hired if they wanted to hire him because the Rams are still in the playoffs. So, let's talk about Hackett. Uh, I like this hire. I really am falling in love with this hire, actually. After that press conference and the energy that he brought, like, it's hard not to like it. The dude is just so pumped up, fired up. He looked like he, he said he was trying to contain himself. It is clear Nathaniel Hackett wants to be a Bronco, and it is hard not to like that. It's incredible to see. He looks fired up. He looks energetic. And the stories that we've been hearing from the Green Bay locker room, how the guys in the locker room love him, it's clear they want to follow him, how they are ready to pretty much run through a brick wall for him. It is hard not to get fired up about Nathaniel Hackett. I have no problem thinking that this locker room is going to rally behind him. He'll relate to the guys. He's got real fun personality to him, which is the exact opposite of Vic. Like, if you remember Vic Fangio, he was not very good at the mic, um, which doesn't usually matter to me too much. Like, what a coach does and does not say at the mic, unless they are, like, constantly sticking their foot in their mouth, which, I mean, he did do that from time to time. But, I mean, unless he's doing that, I don't care much about what the coach does or does not say at the mic. Um, but Vic was just so dry and bland. It was hard to get inspired. This is the exact opposite. This team is in love with... I think this team is going to love this guy. It's clear that the office does. So uh, let's just get into this. One thing we have to talk about that I think a, a lot of Broncos fans are getting excited about, myself included, and we know it when he said it. They asked him about his scheme. He said he will be calling the plays, which makes sense. Mike Shanahan did it when he was hired as a head coach, and he ended up uh, becoming, um, he was a play caller originally. He did some help with the offenses. He would do a collab thing with most head coaches he went to. Then he went to the Raiders as a head coach. He did the, he called the plays there. Then he got fired, uh, and he kind of bounced around from place to place. Uh, as a play caller and quarterback coach until finally he came to Denver. He was given full, full reins of the offense. And we saw what happened. And that's kind of been the theme throughout this Shanahan uh, play calling tree, or coaching tree, I should say. It happened with Kubiak, who was Shanahan's OC in Denver and eventually became a head coach in Houston. And then he was a play caller again in Baltimore. Then he became the head coach in Denver when they won Super Bowl 50. Uh, he was the OC... Uh, uh, we saw uh, Kyle Shanahan, obviously. He was an OC, kind of bounced around the league for a while, calling the plays. Goes to San Francisco, becomes their head coach. Uh, Matt LaFleur, he was the OC. He was kind of paired at the hip with Shanahan for a while. He was also paired at the hip with Sean McVay. And then uh, he was the play caller for the Rams in 2018, but McVay was the guy calling the plays. But he was the OC, and then he goes to Green Bay, becomes a head coach. Uh, this is a common theme we've seen throughout the Shanahan play. Uh, coaching tree and i expect the same thing for nathaniel hackett i think this is the same thing for him he's been a play caller other places he's called plays and now he's gotten chances to learn from other guys and now he has officially learned from matt lafleur and now he will get his chance to be the first hc play caller reign it's the common thing that's happened throughout this coaching tree and when he talked about his scheme outside zone runs with play action passes and deep shots, getting receivers isolated on islands, one on one matchup, my guy versus your guy. Let's see who's better. <laughs> that had to get so many fans excited. Given the talent that we got in this roster, you have to love that. The idea that he's going to get our receivers isolated one on one with a bunch of corners, and he's going to say, I believe my guy is better than your guy. Let's see who's better. And get, using our rushing attack, like, if you're Javante Williams, and if they bring back Melvin Gordon, which I think they should, I, you got to love that if you're Gordon and Williams, because you got to be thinking, man, they're going to use us heavily, because, you know, the rushing attack is a 
huge part of a Shanahan offense. It is important to getting your passing lane set up and getting your quarterback out. He also emphasized a lot of bootlegs and play action. He emphasized giving protections of the quarterback, so I can imagine offensive line and them looking at that will be a huge part of this upcoming offseason and, of course, the scheming of the team because they're going to be looking this entire time at protecting the quarterback, giving him time to throw. They don't want the quarterback taking a lot of hits. Nathaniel Hackett has inspired so much more through his press conference than we saw anything from Pat Shermer. This is such a breath of fresh air, exactly what the Broncos needed. Nathaniel Hackett also, by the way, I got to say, his energy, and I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so when he says he sees himself as Han Solo, that automatically is going to win me over. And I also don't mind having Han Solo as my head coach. And now I'm looking forward to the idea of having <laughs> Justin Timberlake songs and Star Wars verbiage thrown <laughs> as part of our offense. I think that's going to be great. Hackett does seem to understand that how to utilize talent. And with the roster that we got, Hackett he seems really excited to get into the film, tear the tape apart, and see just what... Uh, what this offense needs. Shermer had no understanding of the talent we, we, we had or how to use it. Jerry uh, Jerry Judy is criminally underutilized. He has such great explosiveness as a wide receiver, great route running ability. He has the ability to create separation. He's shifty. He's fast. And they rarely used it. K.J. Hamler, I know he got hurt this past year, but even when he was in, they didn't use him that much. Great, fantastic deep threat. You can get behind safeties, burn people with that 4-2 speed. The only time they used him was in the freaking uh, preseason game when Locke hit him with that deep touchdown. They, When they had him in 2020, they rarely used him. His biggest moments were, of course, the big touchdowns he had against Carolina uh, in 2020. Uh, Noah Fant, great tight end, great receiving tight end. Not used that much. That'll be a huge part of this uh, new Shanahan offense. Uh, this offense is finally going to get a makeover that we've been desperately needing. And hiring an offensive coach finally addresses the need that Broncos fans have been having for the last six years. The lack of production on offense, and they will finally get a head coach that is committed to addressing it. And I trust that he'll get a good D.C. hire. It's reported he's even looking at someone who is kind of coach a, def a defense similar to Vic Fangio, which... I like that idea. Look, say what you want about Vic, but Vic's defense are historically good. Vic's defense are pretty good everywhere he's gone. And I'm pretty sure wherever Vic goes, by the way, if you know recent head coaching news, you know that's probably not going to be the Raiders. Wherever Vic goes, I'm pretty sure their defense is going to get a huge lift. And I'm <laughs> whoever hires Vic Fangio, just know you're getting a good defensive coach, defensive coach. And if we got something similar to that, totally down. Broncos just put in a request to hire a Ravens defense of, uh, Raven defensive coach for our coordinator job. And if you know anything about the Ravens defense, their mentality is, if I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose punching you in the face. The Ravens love blitzing. They know how to throw the house at you. Given some of the hard-hitting talent and edge rush talent that we got on this team, you have to love that idea if you're a Denver fan. Going from a defense that rarely ever sent the house and applied the pressure that was needed to now a defense that is all about making a quarterback's life living hell you have to love that as a fan. Hackett's staff will be huge, and I am very interested to see, not just his OC, who he hires for special teams. That will be huge. I hope they retain Mike Munchak. That would be huge. The Broncos are retaining their cornerback coach, which is fantastic because one of the best parts of this year was our secondary. We maintain the chemistry with guys like... Uh, with uh, Caden Stearns, Pat Sertan, Ronald Darby, Bryce Callahan, uh, Justin Simmons. Retain that little chemistry there. Uh, I like this idea that the Broncos are putting the staff together. But, of course, the big issue is the quarterback now. And they asked him about Aaron Rodgers, and Peyton gave the correct answer. And it's a true answer when he said Aaron Rodgers did not play a factor, which is true, and here's why. You cannot hire a head coach because of the hope that just maybe this player might become available and then maybe you'll get him. You can't do that because if you hire that, what if that trade doesn't work out? What if he retires? What if he never comes? What if then what? He's going to be like, well, well, I guess we kind of botched our hire because we didn't get the player and that's why we hired him. No, no, no. They hired Hackett because 
They had an eight-hour interview with the guy. I guarantee you, they talked about all sorts of ideas. Well, what if we brought this guy in? And if you've listened to a few podcasts, they know, hey, what if we drafted a rookie? How would you factor the offense around him? And you know that, yes, it had to have come up because he's currently the only guy left on the roster under a contract. They had to say, what if it was Drew Locke? How would you affect the offense around him? They have to bring that up because you have to know, regardless of who your quarterback is, that your coach can fit the scheme around him. That's what a good coach can do. They can fit their scheme around their players and or use players to help fit in their scheme. And I think that's what Hackett can do. I have the confidence that no matter what the Broncos do at quarterback, they'll be able to find a way to make this work. If it's Rodgers or Wilson, we know they're going to hit this out of the park. This offense is going to be explosive. If it's a rookie like, say, Coral or Pickett or Strong, then, hey, look at that. Maybe uh, maybe, uh, maybe Hackett knows how to manufacture an offense around them, and we'll finally have a, co- a coach dedicated to the quarterback because he'll actually care about the quarterback. And if somehow they're, they have to go back to Drew Locke, I'm not saying that it's going to fix him, but he'll be in a much better situation than Vic Fangio. He'll be with a coach that actually wants to work with him. He'll be with a coach that has that great energy, a coach that wants to work with him, a coach that actually likes him. And not to mention, people forget, when they drafted Locke in 2017, and back in 2019, the Scangrello system is extremely similar. No, not extremely similar. It is this kind of offense. This Shanahan, Kubiak-inspired offense and it is notoriously hard for rookie quarterbacks to learn. And I think it's clear that Scangrello liked Locke coming out of the draft. So did Elway. That's where they took him. They said they drafted Locke for that system. It was meant for him. So this is the system. It would be very similar or close, if not basically the system he played in his rookie year. So he'd be familiar with it. He'd have an offensive coach. If they brought in a guy like Rodgers, of course. He plays with Hackett. He knows the system. Wilson, he's got the skill set to play in this kind of a system. He's that good a quarterback. You draft a rookie, maybe, hey, I say give him a guy that maybe will be ready to go right away that you can adapt him into the system. These are pretty talented quarterbacks coming up in the draft. Regardless, that's why we know they hired Hackett, because they believe in his philosophy and his vision. That's what they needed to know. What's his vision for the offense? As well as the defense, too, but what's his vision to fix this offense? And I, I like this hire. I think it's a good hire. Peyton and his staff did such a great job on this search committee. They really took it down to the wire with some of these hires, but they did it right. They didn't rush it. And I'm glad they did. Um, it's a breath of fresh air. Some hope and optimism return to Broncos country. We'll find out what's coming up in the offseason in the upcoming months. But we have some refreshing stuff again. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below about the Hackett hire, what you think it will do for the Broncos. Uh, I am excited to see what comes up in the playoffs, and I am working on a Bengal video. I am desperately waiting to see how this AFC Championship game goes. This game is going to be fantastic. Um, also, have some crazy news coming up with something around the NFL recently, and I got a couple hockey videos coming up too. We're excited about that. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. God bless you all. See you guys later.